So, uh, democracy, Prabhuji, I think uh, the first democracy, it was in Athens, right? Where uh, everyone got together and the wisest man spoke and they voted for their decisions. That was the beginning of parliament. Parliament, right. The parliament members, just like nowadays, party, India is suffering in party politics and they did not like to give importance to monarchy. They wanted to rule according to their whims and therefore the whole scheme failed. The so-called democracy under party politics is nonsense. Monarchy have said, this democracy is government of asses. Because the population are asses and they vote on another as to be the head of the government. So what you can do? Sayyudhe kriyate rajan, sakim asnu bahanam. These are the instructions in Sanskrit. If you make a dog a king, don't you think that he will still lap the shoes? You cannot change his habits. स्व यस्य भावस्य नस सुदूरते क्रमः एनी वन्स हैबिट इवन इफ यू गिव गुड पोजिशन यू कैन नॉट चेंज इट द एग्जाम्पल इज जस्ट लाइक इफ यू मेक अ डॉग द किंग ही विल इमिजिएटली कम फ्रॉम द थ्रोन एंड बाइट द शू यू सी राइट सो मटीरियली यू कैन नॉट चेंज ओनली बाय स्पिरिचुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग वन कैन बी वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ वोट बाय एसेस According to Vedic civilization, there was democracy, but that democracy is selected committee. Just like in England, there was privy council. So selected body of learned Brahmins and sages, they were guiding the king and the king himself was properly educated how to rule over under religious principles. He was trained from the beginning of his life as prince. As the future heir of the throne, he was trained. And at the same time, he was guided by a council of learned sages and Brahmins. They were looking over the activities of the king. As soon as there was a mistake, they will see. And there are instances, whenever there was a bad king, they were dethroned. Not for political purposes, as I said. Right. So, Prabhuji, what are the defects of the democracy today? I mean, why is this form of democracy bad? Hmm. No basis. Now, suppose if a people in general, they are not advanced by their votes, somebody is elected. He may not be also advanced. That is the defect of democracy. Mm -hmm. Mass of people, they are not advanced. So simply by their vote, if somebody is elected, then they will have to repent. Just like Nixon, he is elected. But these people are again decrying him that no you are not good so why did you elect him you elect and again you reject that is the defect of democracy that people are not advanced they can commit mistake elect somebody wrong and then they will lament this is the defect because the mass of people they have no perfect knowledge by sentiment so it may be they are electing a wrong person that is the defect of democracy uh huh yes Shavid Marahoshtakarehe, Samstuta Purusha Pashu. What is this politics, the democracy? Some animal voting, another big animal, that's all. The leader is an animal and the voters, they are animals. So, what is the use of such politics? They remain animals. That is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Shavid Marahoshtakarehe, Samstuta Purusha Pashu. That is going on. And the fourth class men select their representative. So, they must be also fourth class. Democracy means selected, I mean to voted, elected. So, because they are being elected by fourth class men, the leaders are also fourth class men. The fourth class men cannot appreciate the first class man. Ah, right. A fourth class man cannot um, appreciate the first class man. Yes, because democracy means by votes. So, the votes are given by the rascal shudras. 
So what is the meaning of electing somebody if the vote givers are also rascal and fool and the vote taker is a big fool, big rascal, that's all. He manages something somehow or other to take the votes, that is it. The mass of people, especially in this age of Kali, are all born Shudras, basically low-born, ill-trained, unfortunate and badly associated. They themselves do not know the highest perfectional aim of life. Therefore, votes cast by them actually have no value and thus persons elected by such irresponsible votes cannot be responsible representatives like Maharaj Yudhishthir. True, very true. Also, the people must have political sense. Then democracy is there. Mm -hmm. But here, mass of people, they do not know what is politics. Right. One gentleman, he was Prabhupada's friend. It was in 1952 or 53, Mr. Dutt. He was a statistics man. So, he was going in villages to take some statistics. He said to Prabhupada, In the villages, they asked me, Babuji, Angrej Kakhan, which means in Bengali asking, when will the English return? So, the mass of people, they are for foreigners rule. Come and rule over us. Because the mass of people, they have no sense of politics. Anyone may come and let them rule. If you don't mind. Whatever little tax you want, you take. That's all. That's all right. The mass of people is like that. They are not concerned in politics. Under the circumstances, a democracy is not suitable. No, democracy means the people must have political sense. Then democracy is there. If the people have no political sense, artificially they are giving vote, that democracy, what can be said? Formerly, political fighting is always there. People have no concept. Democracy means that every man has to take part in the competition. Any fool. They have been made fools. Ah, uh, right. Rascals, what is the value of their vote? Sometimes giving vote here, sometimes giving vote there. Yes, people are rascals. If induce them, vote. They will vote. They have no choice actually. Who is good or bad? Therefore it is said, Shvabidvara hoshtakarahi, samsuta. Some rascal, fool, animals, they are voting. She is very good or he is very good. So what is the value of? What are they? They are animals. You train the animal. Dance like this. He will dance. Right. Even a monkey can be made to applaud. Oh yes. So their vote, their adoration, what is the value? By whose adoration you have become big? Some monkeys and some fools, some rascals, some dogs. And formerly it was the king should be approved by the saintly Brahmins. Mm -hmm. The public does not know how to distinguish the rogues and the thieves. Therefore the rogues and thieves take the advantage of it and somehow or other and take vote and sit on the presidential chair. Because the mass of people, they have no perfect knowledge by sentiment. So it may be they are electing a wrong person. That is the defect of democracy. Right. So they, have, they must have political sense. Yes, they should. Otherwise not democracy. Another thing is that since everyone is a Shudra, the leaders are also not Kshatriyas. They are not trained as Kshatriyas. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, the democratic, if you send some Shudra to act as Kshatriya, they cannot do it. You have got practical experience. In Vietnam, what happened? The American soldiers, they were uh, simply taking intoxication, hunting after prostitutes and running from the enemy. And when they were attacked, they were running away. Because they are Shudras. How they can fight? They are not trained up as Kshatriyas. Huh? Anyone who is unemployed, let him become a soldier. But he cannot fight. That is not possible. Neither this class of men have good brain to give direction to the society. The democracy means anyone can go to the government and because he is not Kshatriya, his only business is how to get money so long he is on the post. Right. The whole population is rascal, Shudra. So anyone you elect, if he is by qualification, he is a Shudra, worker, he is not intelligent person, he is not Brahman, he is not Kshatriya. The other administrators, the president or the minister, they should be Kshatriyas. Mm -hmm. That is going on that any rascal, somehow or other, he gets power, he becomes the head. But he has no training how to become actually the protector of the citizens. Therefore, after the whole world is in trouble. 
The democracy is the government of asses because the population are asses and they vote another ass to be the head of the government. So what can you do? Show it varahoshta karahi samsuta purusha pashu. These are the instruction in the Sanskrit. As I said, if you make a dog a king, don't you think that he will still lap the shoes? You cannot change his habit. Yasya bhavasya nasa sudurate karmaha. Anyone's habit, even if you give good position, you cannot change it. The example is just like you make a dog the king, he will still immediately come from the throne and bite the shoe. You see? So materially you cannot change. Only by spiritual understanding one can be. What is the benefit finishing this monarchy? The democracy that is under set of rascals. There was one rascal, now hundreds of rascals. That is the benefit. Hundreds of rascals, they go and form the democratic government, ministers. There is decoitry. There is rising of rogues and thieves and they are enjoying fat salary. There is no monarchy and all lower class, they are taking charge of government. They do not know. What they will know it? They have gone there for getting some money. I am now in position, get that much money. They know after 5 years, I will be nowhere. So let me accumulate some money while I am on the ministerial post. This is going on. Who cares for the good of the citizen? If we discuss these things, it will be great criticism. But this is the position. True, 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 very true. Yes, because they do not refer to the scriptures, the leaders don't know the aim of life and does not know where to lead the citizens thereby. Right. At the present moment, the so-called executive heads are more or less selected from materially ambitious persons who simply look after their own personal interest. They have no knowledge of the Shastras. In other words, the executive heads are fools and rascals in the strict sense of terms. And the people in general are Shudras. This combination of fools and rascals and Shudras cannot bring about peace and prosperity in the world. Therefore, we find periodic upheavals in society in the form of battles, communal rights and fratricidal quarrels. Under these circumstances, not only are the leaders unable to lead the people towards liberation, but they cannot even give them peace of mind. In Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that anyone who lives on concocted ideas without reference to Shastras never becomes successful and does not attain happiness or liberation after death. Earlier, all the Kshatriyas, kings, would be always accompanied by hordes of Brahmins. There was a committee and the king would take their advice to manipulate the political affairs or administration and they would consult standard books. Just like nowadays, the rascals, every day they are changing some law. Somebody told me where in Africa, every week there is change of cabinet, every week. Means so full of rascals. So one rascal will fight with another rascal. So there is no stability of government. All these rascals, politicians, they are trying to occupy the post. Oh, I shall become president, I shall become secretary and then I shall exploit the state like anything. This is the motive. Their manifestation that I am going to give you heaven. If you select me president, then I shall give you heaven within three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is what is going on. True, true, Prabhupada. They don't know how to lead citizens to perfection of human life because they don't read scriptures. Yes, they don't read scriptures. They don't know anything. Not only they do not read scriptures, but also they do not respect saintly persons and Brahmins who have scriptural knowledge and can guide them. Mm -hmm. Earlier, the Brahmins, they gave guidance according to Shastra. And the king is trained up in such a way that he takes instruction from the saintly persons and brahmans and rules over the kingdom. Therefore, it was so perfect. Mm -hmm. Imam Raja and Rushio. Rushio will give you. Rushio means great saintly persons, the brahmans. They should give the government men. But who is consulting the saintly persons? The great kings were very responsible in taking the instruction given by the saintly personalities. The kings used to accept the instructions given by great sages like Parashara, Vyasadeva, Narada, Devala and Asita. In other words, they would first accept the authority of saintly persons and then execute their monarchical power. 
Unfortunately, in the present age of Kali, the head of the government does not follow the instructions given by the saintly persons. Therefore, neither the citizens nor the men of the government are very happy. Their duration of life is shortened and almost everyone is wretched and bereft of bodily strength and spiritual power. Yes. So, what is the solution, Prabhuji? Hmm. So, we will now talk of the solution. What modifications are needed to correct this democracy? Right. The changes are to be done at various levels, like the general public. We will start with the general public. Okay. So, the masses or general public should be educated on how to vote. Mm -hmm. Currently, there is no such training on how to vote. And people are fooled by the tricky pseudo leaders having no qualification. And they end up voting another wrong person. Right. The masses of people should be educated, just like we are educating, no meat eating. So automatically the meat selling slaughterhouses will be stopped. And therefore we are training people to be Krishna conscious. And when the Krishna conscious people will elect Krishna conscious leaders, there will be peace and prosperity. In the democracy, if people are properly trained up, then they will vote for a nice man and there will be nice government. <laughs> Yes, uh, Prabhuji, in other words, uh, to tell the public that you should elect God-conscious persons uh, to, the, to have a better society. Yes, yes, that is our propaganda, that this is the standard of leadership. If you elect first-class leader, then your government will be first-class. Mm -hmm. If you can educate the people, don't vote for the rascals, just try to understand who is the real man, who is the real leader. So, political program is very important. Yes, if public is educated to see right type of leader, then automatically. And it is very easy thing that leader must be faithful. A leader must know what is God and how to trust in Him. And he must be free from all sinful activities. The pillars of sinful activities are there. This is our propaganda. If they make it point that if one is not Krishna conscious, I will not give a vote then everything will be perfect, nice. Otherwise, this kind of election is a rascal election. It has no meaning. Therefore, the public must know whom to elect and how to elect. That should be our propaganda. Because nowadays, it is democratic government. Teach people how to select the real leader. Right. Very right. Also, they should be trained in Varanashram. Mm -hmm. Formerly, only the Kshatriyas, they were kings. But at the present moment, because the institution of Varanashram Dharma is topsy-turvy, practically no more existing, everyone in this age is calculated to the Shudras. So therefore, there is struggle. Who will capture power? So in the Kali Yuga, the Shudras, Shudra means the last, less than Shudras, the Chandalas, they are taking part of Kshatriyas or Brahmanas or Vaishyas. This is the effect of Kali Yuga. Therefore, it is very lamentable. One must be trained up. Neither this class of men have good brain to give direction to the society. The democracy means anyone can go to the government and because he is not Kshatriya, his only business is how to get money so long he is on the post. So this Vedic scheme, Varanashram, is very important scheme. If possible, it should be introduced and taken up very seriously. That is one of the items of Krishna consciousness movement. To re-establish the institution of Varana and Ashram. Not by birth, but by qualification. Chatur Varana Maya system, Guna Karma Vibhagasha. Guna Karma, by quality. Mm -hmm. Everyone is born innocent, child. Then he is trained up by the guardians. Similarly, there should be a training. How to become Brahman, how to become Kshatriya, how to become Vaishya. And the government should see that everyone, as he is trained up, he is working according to his quality and occupational duty. Then there will be complete peace and harmony. That human society is perfect. Because we all know that Chaturvana system, Chaturvana Mayak system, Guna Garam Vyagasha, you have given up Krishna's instruction. Now you have to suffer. You do not train Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudras. So anyone who is in power, he is good. That is Kaliyug. Kaliyug means anyone gets vote, he is in power. They can misuse the power. There is no Kshatriya. I think that uh, is a wrong system. This open democracy is not a... No, no. Now, either democracy or monarchy, as I told you, the population is Shudra. So, either you make it democracy or any crazy, Shudra will come on power. So, it is said, 
if we do not have an ideal president or ideal king on the head and the prajas also the citizens they do not follow varnashram then there cannot be any peace therefore this varnashram training is a must it should be introduced right so if there is varnashram then we can have brahmanas and a board of brahmans guiding the kshatriya rulers right like elizabeth in england she has got a what she calls a think tank or a board of advisors who meet and advise her on different politics privy council something like that it's called a think tank she is named it in robert's times uh, it was presided over a lord goodman no no the thing is unless the people are krishna conscious either this board or that board that will not help first of all people should know what is the aim of life what is culture how human activity should be directed the people should know first of all this otherwise changing from frying pan to fire is useless so they should be trained as devotees yes we are training people to be krishna conscious and when krishna conscious people will elect krishna conscious leaders there will be peace and prosperity and now because the minority is krishna conscious they cannot elect krishna conscious leaders and therefore havoc is being played so if they vote for krishna conscious persons to become president and prime minister then everything will be saved so that means you have to create voters krishna conscious then everything will be right that should be one of your aims the krishna consciousness movement at the present moment the world is inclined towards the democratic process but the people in general are all contaminated by the modes of passion and ignorance consequently they cannot select the right person to the head of the government the president is selected by votes of ignorant shudras therefore another shudra is elected and immediately the entire government becomes polluted if people strictly followed the principles of bhagavad gita they would elect a person who is lord's devotee then automatically there would be good government if the people in general they become krishna conscious they become trained up in krishna consciousness they understand the value of life how to live then they can send good representative krishna conscious man then government will be nice without becoming harava bhaktasya kuto mahat guna if people are not krishna conscious their so called qualification has no value kuto mahat guna there cannot be value there cannot be any good qualification of a person who is not krishna conscious who is not a devotee that is our conclusion we have got some test you we can study man he may become a very good scholar very good politician very big minister but we test whether he has got any sense of krishna consciousness if he is not immediately i understand that he is a rascal number 1 that's all we have got test you how much he is advanced in krishna consciousness if he is not then he is grouped immediately in four groups dushkrutena means constantly committing sinful activities mudha rascal naradhama lowest of mankind maya apuruta jnana Although educated with high degrees his knowledge has been taken away asura bhava mashrita and demon you become good man you will see government is good so therefore the mass education should be how to become good man and how one can be good man that is also stated in the shastras yasyasi bhaktir bhagavatya kinchana sarvair gunas tatra samasate sura if one is simply made a devotee and he has got unflinching faith in god krishna then all the good qualities automatically develop so therefore this is the duty of this society to make everyone a devotee a sincere a pure devotee of krishna that is krishna consciousness movement if you make the people all good you will have good society you will have good government you will have everything good you become krishna conscious you elect your representative krishna conscious and the government will be all right you will be happy if you are intelligent the government will be intelligent because not it is democracy if you are intelligent the government is intelligent it is up to you to change then everything will be all right right so this was regarding the general public after general public let's talk of the executive directors now executive director is basically the governing body now this is specific to iscon the executive director this term specifically used by shilo prabhupad for his con leaders that manage temples executive directors interesting yes so prabhupad said 
three executive directors. Each temple will be an ISKCON property and will be managed by three executive directors. And they should be minimum of three and maximum of five per temple as far as ISKCON is concerned. ISKCON temple. Never less than three or more than five executive directors acting at one time. Mm -hmm. And they are appointed for life. As Prabhupada said, the executive directors who have herein being designated are appointed for life. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada appointed, Prabhupada designated certain devotees as the executive directors. So he was talking about them. Uh -huh. Now as executive director is for his con, same is for president in a state. Yes. The king, the president or head of the state should always remember that he is not the proprietor but the servant. In present age, the king or president forgets that he is servant of God and thinks himself as servant of people. Right. Servant of God means he should follow the Vedic scriptures, the injunctions, the instructions given by God. Mm -hmm. It is clear therefore that a person who is not well versed in Vedic injunctions, Veda Shastra Veda, should not run for election as president, governor, etc. Formerly kings were other shis. Which meant that although they were serving as kings, they were as good as saintly persons because they would not transgress any of the injunctions of the Vedic scriptures and would rule under the direction of great saintly persons and Brahmins. Right. And as laws are Bhagavad Gita, they should read Bhagavad Gita. They must understand Bhagavad Gita. So all the kings, all the government headmen, they understood Bhagavad Gita. That is needed. This science, the Bhagavad Gita, must be learned by the leaders. So because they do not read Bhagavad Gita, they do not know how to maintain the whole society. Therefore there is now chaos. Therefore it is needed. Imam Raja Shiyo Viduhu, the Raja, the kings, the government or the government, they must study Bhagavad Gita. Then it will be nice. Imam Raja and Rushio. Rushio will give you. Rushio means great saintly persons, the Brahmins. They should give the government men, but who is consulting the saintly persons? This is another point. They should follow the footsteps of great religious personalities. Simply abolishing monarchy and replacing it with democracy is not sufficient unless the government men are religious and follow in the footsteps of great religious personalities. Like Srila Prabhupada for his con. Yes, Srila Prabhupada for his con. They should follow. That is the point. They should accept the authority of great saintly persons. Right. Now, we shall talk of the elections of these presidents or the heads or executive directors if we speak of his form. Okay. Interestingly, Srila Prabhupada has given different verdicts about how will a head be appointed and we shall discuss them all. Okay. One of the things he told is that the king or the head should not be elected by general public. So a leader should not be elected? Elected, but not by this general public. They have no intelligence. They sometimes elect the wrong person. And again, they try to drag him down. So what is the use of such election? Because that election is not sober, not mature. If the election was mature and sober, then there was no need of dragging him down again. Yes, but uh, people will still want to elect, will they not? Since it is democracy, right? I think even in ISKCON, devotees would like to elect their own temple presidents or temple heads. No, democracy means people elected. If people wants that election should be amongst Krishna conscious person, then it will be done. One man's ruling will not be possible unless there is dictatorship. Uh -huh. I see. So, general people can elect provided they are Krishna conscious. Yes, and the candidate must also be Krishna conscious, a qualified person. Right. Then people can elect. Yes, amongst Krishna conscious people. The leader also must be God conscious. How to get a God conscious leader? Yes, if you train people to become God conscious, then naturally president will come God conscious. Therefore, we have taken the task to train people how to become godly. Then naturally, the president will become godly. If people decide that we shall not cast our vote to any man who is not Krishna conscious, then Krishna conscious man will come. 
But formerly in the Vedic civilization, a king was elected by first class men of the society. Mm -hmm. The same three persons, the Brahmins, they did not take part in politics, but they recommended that this man should be. Just like Krishna, he wanted Yudhishthir must be the king because king is supposed to be God's representative. How to rule over? Not that these cats and dogs will find out a lion and vote him to the chair. That is not the process. Your modern process is that the electors, they are not trained up and they elect another big animal to become the president. Therefore, it is failure. Unless people are very much trained up, the election by masses is not very good. Rather, a first class man, they should nominate. This man should be president. That will be nice. Your question was, how to find out president? Good. So, this is the process. So, there is no intelligent class of man. That is the difficulty. Who is trying to control this mind, control his senses? This is the first condition to become a first class man. As soon as a man sees beautiful woman, immediately his mind is agitated. Where is the control? As soon as the mind is agitated, the senses are agitated. And this is the first condition of the first class man. He should not be agitated in his mind and agitated by senses. This is first condition. So where is that school who is training to how to control the mind, how to control the senses, how to become truthful, how to become cleansed internally, externally. These are the signs of first class men. So we are trying our little bit to make some men as first class. This is our teeny effort. We are not patronized by any interested person, neither by the government, but our own effort we are trying. Right. So they were not selected. The leader, formerly it was monarchy. The monarchies were selected by advisory board of first class men. <laughs> and formerly it was king, should be approved by saintly Brahmins. I see. Yes. So this was another point that Prabhupada said about electing the head. And then there is another thing. In another place, Sri Prabhupada says, in regards to ISKCON temples, ISKCON temple level, he says, in the event of the death or failure to act for any reason of any of the said directors, he, earlier he told the list of the directors, a successor director or directors may be appointed by the remaining directors, provided the new director is my initiated, that is Prabhupada's initiated disciple following strictly all the rules and regulations of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness as detailed in my books, means proper books, and provided that they are never less than three or more than five executive directors acting at one time. Mm -hmm. In other words, he should be appointed by the other members of governing committee. These verdicts appear contradictory. Yes, but we can find some solution to them. For now, we shall leave it here and leave the further discussion about it to Padmula Shantapu. He will carry it forward while he is talking about the implementation. Padmula Shantapu? Yes. Is he going to talk about the implementation? Yes. Okay. So for now, we shall move ahead and talk about the qualifications of the electoral candidate. Okay. So what should be the qualification of the person who stands for the elections as a leader? A real leader means who does not commit mistakes, we we'll discuss this, who is not illusion, who does not cheat and who has no imperfect senses, who has or in other words, who has got perfect senses. But how is it that possible for a human being? Yes, if you say how is it possible for a conditioned soul, yes, it is possible if you follow the perfect, just like we are doing. We are following Krishna. He does not commit mistake. He is not delusioned. His senses are not imperfect. And he does not cheat. We are following. Therefore, although we are imperfect, because we are following the perfect, our proposition is perfect. A child may be illiterate, but when he is taught, write A like this, and he follows that, he becomes literate. This is the policy. Uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada once gave the example that when the master craftsman is working and he has got an apprentice. When the apprentice works, it is also considered same quality because he is under the direction of the master. Yes, if you are under the direction of a perfect teacher, then your conclusion is perfect. 
The difficulty is that we are following imperfect teachers, blind men. And what is the benefit of following a blind man? If the man is himself a blind man and if he follows another blind man, what benefit he will get? Both of them will fall into the ditch. That is going on. Just like some rascal Guruji Maharaj, he is a rascal and he is preparing so many rascals and there are so many others. They are doing the same mischief and there is no control by the government. The government is rascal. Government does not know who is real, who is imitation. Otherwise, they should have checked immediately. But they do not check. They do not know. If we do not have an ideal president or ideal king on the head and the prajas also, the citizens, they do not follow the Varanashram, then there cannot be any peace. <laughs> the proposition is that they should not commit mistake. Either king or the elected person should not commit mistake. I see. So he should not commit mistake by perfectly following a perfect person. Like in Iskon, Srila Prabhupada gives perfect knowledge and Iskon leaders should follow him to be qualified as real leaders, right? Very precisely. Otherwise he cannot be a leader. That is Vedic verdict. Right. Also, the leader should be trained Kshatriya and only trained Kshatriyas should become a leader. One thing is to educate the masses to elect a proper person. But if you try to educate the mass of people to become educated, to elect the right person, that is very difficult. But if a king, a person, is educated nicely, that is easier. That is my point of view. Everything will be alright. Because the man on the head is perfectly, he will manage, he will manage. But if he is not perfect, then it is not possible. Therefore the endeavor should be made. Either call it dictator or president or king, it doesn't matter. The man on the top of the executive must be a perfect man. Then the other administrators, the president or the ministers, they should be Kshatriyas. Formerly only the Kshatriyas were kings. But at the present moment, because the institution of Varanasham Dharma is topsy-turvy, practically no more existing, everyone in this age is calculated to the Shudras. So therefore, there is struggle. Who will capture the power? The ministers, presidents, they should be Kshatriya. In the so-called people's government, there is no trained Kshatriya, king. As soon as someone strong accumulates votes, he becomes the minister or president without training from the learned Brahman expert in Shastras. Actually, people will be happy with a trained leader. Whether a monarch or a dictator takes control of the government and rules the people according to the standard regulations of the authorized scriptures. Right. So a leader must be trained basically. Yes, but not by anyone. But by Dujavarya Shikshaya, first class Brahman. Yes, I see. And Veda Shastravid, he must know Shastras. A person who is not well versed in Vedic injunctions, Veda Shastravid, should not run for election as president, governor, etc. Formerly, kings were Rajarshis, which meant that although they were serving as kings, they were as good as saintly persons because they would not transgress any injunctions of the Vedic scriptures and would rule under the direction of great saintly persons and Brahmins. According to this arrangement, modern presidents, governors and chief executive officers are all unworthy of their posts because they are not conversant with Vedic administrative knowledge and they do not take direction from great saintly persons and Brahmins. One must be governor, he must be as good as Rishi, saintly person, Raja Rishiyo, they must understand the purport of Bhagavad Gita, the aim of life. Then they will educate. The governor will educate the citizens how to make life successful. But if he does not understand what is the success of life, how he will govern? But it is going on. But Bhagavad Gita says, Imam Rajarshiyo Vidu. The Bhagavad Gita is meant for Rajarshis, the saintly kings, saintly governor. Because he has to govern, he must know how to govern. What is the aim of life? How they can be elevated? Sainyapatyam cha rajam cha Danda netutvameva cha Sarvalokadhipatyam cha Veda Shastra Vidarhati In this verse it is clearly stated Veda Shastra Vidarhati That all high government posts are especially meant for persons who are well conversant with the teachings of the Vedas. In the Vedas there are definite instructions defining how a king, commander-in-chief, soldier and citizen should behave. Right. 
So if you understand Bhagavad Gita, then you will be able to train your students, your citizens, your subordinates how to remain engaged. The Raja, the King, the government or the government, they must study Bhagavad Gita. Then it will be nice. Therefore, the first teaching of Bhagavad Gita should be taken by the persons who are going to be elected in the government service. The public should be aware of this. If somebody comes to canvas for vote, you should first inquire whether you have read Bhagavad Gita. So it is therefore a great necessity that Raja Shiovidu, Raja, those who are government men, they must study Bhagavad Gita. Otherwise, don't give them vote. Mm-hmm. And Rajarshi, as I said, he should be a Rajarshi. Trained as Rajarshi, right? Yes, trained. We are not for this so-called democracy because they are not trained. If the king is trained, that was the system of monarchy, just like Yudhishthir Maharaj or Arjun or anyone. All the kings, Rajarshi, they were called Rajarshi. Imam vivasvate yogan proktavan ahamam vyayam vivasvan manave praha manurikshvakave bravit evam parampara praptam imam rajarshiyo vidhu rajarshiyo raja king means he is not only king he is a great rishi saintly person just like maharaj yudhishthir or arjun they are saintly persons they are not ordinary this drunkard king that I have got so much money, let me drink and let there be dancing of the prostitutes. Not like that. They were Rishi. Although they were king, they were Rishi. That kind of king wanted, Rajarshi. Then people will be happy. In Bengali, there is a proverb. Rajarapape Rajanashta Kruhini Doshe Gruhastha Prashta In Gruhastha life, in householder life, if the wife is not good, then nobody will be happy in that home. Grastha life, householder life. Similarly, in a kingdom, if the king is impious, then everything, everyone will suffer. This is the problem. The king must be a Rajarshi. So you mean the president in the democracy must also be a Rajarshi, right? Raja means king or the ruler. Here it is also a regulative principle. Why king is accepted? Why a governor is accepted? Why a president is? Even in this day of democracy, we have abolished the system of monarchy. But still, they select somebody to be a monarch, a king, or to occupy the post of the king. That is called president. Why? Because unless there is one head or on the head of the government who can actually control. Control means whether citizens are following, executing the rules and regulations of the law of the state. Therefore, a certain man, qualified man, who enjoys the confidence of the people, he is accepted as the king. This is the position. So such president, king or the executive head must be saintly person. Therefore here it is said, Parikshin Nama Rajarshiyo. Rajarshi means those who are on the top of the government. He must be Rishi, saintly person. Just like this, our Krishna conscious movement. The head of the institution must be a saintly person. Otherwise, how can he become a controller? Controller there must be. Right. And further, what is the qualification of the controller? He must be saintly person. He must know what is the principle of life, what is the value of life, why one should be controlled by somebody else. These things are required to become qualified. Right. And as you said, he should be trained by first class Brahmins, right? Yes, of course. So how this knowledge can be gotten unless one is trained by Dujavarya Shikshaya? First class learned Brahmins. One has to learn from him, not from rascals, fools, cats and dogs. No, that is not learning. Dujavarya Shikshaya. So like Maharaj Parikshit, so he was trained up by first class Brahmins. Tatao Parikshit Dujavarya Shikshaya Mahim Maha Bhagavata Shishasah Now your son it is proposing, let us pray to God how we can get good government. They are coming down again, but why not train? Now you are going to pray to God, please give us good government. Why don't you elect a person Maha Bhagavat? Maha Bhagavat? You mean the leader must be a pure devotee, Mahabhagavat? Yes, we discussed this. Yes, yes, we, we did discuss this, yes. But you said Mahabhagavat, do you mean uh, one has to be a pure devotee to be a leader even in the sage like? Yes, you are Bhagavat and a leader should be Mahabhagavat. That is Krishna conscious movement. That people, you become devotees, Bhagavat and you select one Mahabhagavat to be your ruler. 
then you will be happy not only bhagwat not only your caliber but still further there are bhagwat there are three kinds of devotees three kinds of devotees means neophyte middle class and mahabhagwat 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 means one who can see krishna in everything and everything in krishna that is mahabhagwat that is explained in bhagavad gita sarva bhuteshu ya pashyad atma he does not see anything except god everything in god and god in everything that is the qualification of mahabhagwat so just see how elevated bharat parikshit that he was mahabhagwat in another place he has written i forgot that word that is also mahabhagwat so parikshit maharaj was not an ordinary person he was mahabhagwat mahim mahabhagwata shishasah ruled over a great devotee it does not mean a great devotee is simply engaged in chanting hari krishna no a great devotee may be the chief of the executive function of the state he can become that is required not that only mahabhagwat required in churches or temples no mahabhagwat required also as the head of the executive function that is also required otherwise how people will be happy every field there must be mahabhagwat so prabhas guru maharaj used to say that that when shall we see the high court judges are devotees of krishna then our preaching will be somewhat forward so that is the aim of krishna consciousness movement that everyone at least those who are ruling those who are on the executive function they must be all mahabhagavatas under them everything should be ruled then people will be happy because they will never do anything unjustly their only desire is mahabhagavat is how to give relief to the suffering humanity that is mahabhagavat so parikshit maharaj was mahabhagavat and therefore he was interested to rule over not ordinary man but a mahatma right yes not mahatma by stamping or by changing the dress no mahatma means who is surrendered to the mahat padam punya sho murare murari krishna's name is mahat padam he is mahatma so in this way here is rushab dev is teaching us how we should select now it is the time for democracy so lord rushab dev is teaching us that how you should select the president or the king bharat maharaj the ideal king param bhagavatam if you want good government then this democratic age then you must be good you must know who is good then you can elect here is a good man bharat maharaj param bhagavatam bhagavat janapriya hmm bhagavat janapriya nobody likes bhagavat janam rushab dev therefore recommended bharat maharaj as the emperor of this planet serving a devotee means serving the supreme lord for a devotee always represents the lord when a devotee is in charge the government is always congenial and beneficial for everyone right it's a very high qualification project yeah yes leading people to follow god is not a joke it's a big responsibility you need a high qualified person to lead not that simply somehow or other by political manipulations make the way to the top no right and they should also have respect for saintly persons as i said earlier abolishing monarchy and replacing it with democracy is not sufficient unless the government men are religious and follow in the footsteps of great religious personalities and as i said earlier the king the president or head of the state should always remember that he is not the proprietor but servant in the present age the king the president forgets that he is the servant of god and thinks himself as servant of people it is clear therefore that a person who is not well versed in the vedic injunctions veda shastra vita should not run for election as president governor etc formerly kings were rajarshis which meant that although they were serving as kings they were as good as saintly persons because they would not transgress any of the injunctions of the vedic scriptures and would rule under the direction of great saintly persons and brahmans according to this arrangement as i said the modern presidents governors and chief executive officers are all unworthy of their posts because they are not conversant with the vedic administrative knowledge and they do not take direction from great saintly persons and brahmans if citizens want to be happy and prosperous in this democratic age they should not elect rascals and fools who have no respect for saintly persons i see so these are the qualifications of candidates standing for election aha uh-huh. 
and other qualifications that we had discussed earlier in the philosophy or basic principles of political system right and remember when we are talking about the election we are talking about the member of the executive directors especially in case of iskon temples basically a committee of executives just like for iskon we have the gbc governing body right will there be a president um, or a single head to this um, executive directors governing yes one has to follow the principle monarch one man on the head of the government it may be a monarch or it may be a president it doesn't matter but there must be one chief executive officer on the head that you cannot avoid that is essential nityo nityanam chetana chetananam they have got democratic government or republican government but still they have to find out a president why 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 not without president no that cannot be done there must be one leader any moment any organization there must be and he must be a person one leader must be there in our organization just like in each temple we elect a president then we get gbc then above all prabhupad is so that is needed it is not conventional right so what about the um, election of this particular president hmm shila prabhupad has said that the committee may elect one person as chief as just like in democracy there are senators and there is president so they can nominate i see and uh, how is the working of the of this executive committee i mean how does the executive directors work is is the president the chief and holds the power is he does he have no as other things are managed but by committee and the committee may elect one person as chief as i said of course everything should be decided in a meeting and president may be have as a casting vote but the decision of the meeting will be actually the decision not that president autocracy no aha uh-huh, i see so it's something like democratic centralism yes something like that that was about the president now we will talk about the brahman committee or in other words as prabhat said the legislature or the senate okay and for the legislative assembly the senators only qualified brahmans now the butcher is in the legislative assembly what does he know about making laws he is a butcher but by winning votes he becomes a senator at the present moment by the principle of vox populi a butcher goes to the legislature so everything depends on training actually the legislative assembly or in your country senate they should be all brahmans they give advice formerly this was the system so the legislative assembly should be composed of intellectual brahman they should be composed of men with complete brahmanical culture unless an ideal class of man is on the top of the state to give advice just like britishers they assemble parliament there cannot be any improvement to the human society the whole world is mismanaged because there is no brahmanical culture namo brahmanya devaya go brahmanni hitaya jagat hitaya krishnaya govindaya i am proposing this because krishna consciousness means namo brahmanya devaya go brahmanni hitaya that must be the state must be in favor of brahmanical culture and cow protection then everything will be all right and without brahmanical culture all these third class fourth class lower class simply by votes who can crook and becomes president nixon and so on where is the betterment it will never be suppose a legislator becomes first class brahman so what is wrong there hmm? actually the a legislative assembly should be filled up with men like us parliament to give advice but all lower class bhangis chamaras they are filling up and as i said you can continue with democracy but the legislature should be first class men who has knowledge not these rascals in the whole world you won't find qualified brahmans and they are required for guiding the human society so therefore the human society is in chaotic condition there is no guidance and they have no knowledge yes no knowledge no spiritual knowledge means he is animal that's all say eva gokhara this is the final verdict one who has no spiritual knowledge he is no better than these cows and dogs that's all 
Therefore, guidance of the Brahman required. Why the Brahmans are selected to guide? Because they have got full Vidnana, Jnana Vidnana Asthikyam. Therefore, therefore we are creating some Brahmans. We are not creating the busy fools. No. Right. So the members of the legislator uh, should all be Vaishnavas. They should be Brahman Vaishnav. Brahman Vaishnav. Then, uh, then they could give true advice. Yes. What is this nonsense asses and pigs and dogs and cats? What they will do? Right. So as I understand that, so the legislative assembly gives advice based on scriptures. What are the other primary functions of the legislative assembly? Apart from advising on ruling, the legislative assembly also makes laws, but as given by the Lord. <laughs> Just like the state can give you laws. There is legislative assembly of the state. They can enact the laws. Right. One of the other important functions of the Brahmins is that they keep an eye over the activities of the king. And if the king is not good, they should dethrone him. In other words, the Brahman community should have dethroning power. Uh -huh. Brahman means the head. Mukha bahuru padebhya purusasya shameha saha. Chatvaro Jashni Revarana Gunair Vipradaya Prathak Brahman means the head. Therefore, Brahman is offered so much respect. Because head, without head, in the head, in the brain, you conceive something. And the hands and the legs, they execute the order. Similarly, the head of the society, they should be Brahmans. They are not interested in capturing political power. No, Brahman is to give instruction. We find from Vedic literature, there were committees, Privy Council, Committee of Great Sages and Brahmins. They would give the king advice that you rule in this way. And if the king is disobedient, sometimes the Brahmins would dethrone them or kill them. That was the Vedic system. So basically they should have the dethroning power. Right. And they should be vigilant. Vigilant about the activities of the president or the executive directors. Right. Are the senators elected? No, election is going on under some rules and regulations. So you can make elections under Krishna conscious government rules and regulations. That can be done. So what are these regulations? Legislative assembly, the senators, they must be all first class Brahmins. Otherwise he cannot be elected. This should be introduced. Unless one is following the Brahmanical principles, he cannot be elected. He must give up the four principles of sinful life. He should not accept any salary. Very much learned scholar in Vedic literature. Then he will be elected. I see. And he should not be appointed by public. Uh -huh. Such advisors or members of uh, legislative assembly should not be professional politicians. Nor should they be selected by ignorant public. Not by public? No. Then whom? Rather, they should be appointed by the king. Uh -huh. Yes, I remember that. The king uh, can appoint and select his own Brahman community, but he can't decide who is a Brahman. Right, I remember. Right. He can't decide who is a Brahman, but he can elect his own Brahman committee, the senate, the legislature. Yes. What are the qualifications of these senators? Legislative assembly, the senators, they must be all first class Brahmins. Otherwise, he cannot be elected. As I said, they should be introduced. Unless one is following the Brahminical principles, he cannot be elected. He must give up these four principles of sinful life. He should not accept any salary. Very much learned scholar in Vedic literature. Then he will be elected. And Brahman Vaishnavas. And as I said, they should all be Brahman Vaishnav. So these are the qualifications of a senator. And then there are others of a Brahman, which we had already discussed. We detailed all the qualifications of a advising Brahman in uh, while discussing the political system, of the pr basic principles and philosophy behind a political system. Right. And a little bit about the laws now. Okay. The executive directors must be representative of God, following the laws of God. Mm -hmm. You cannot make law. Law can be made by God. You have to abide by the law. You cannot. You are imperfect. How can you make law? Your law will be imperfect. 
the state mm, cannot make laws to because we have no other experience beyond the state but the state also according to vedic civilization state means he must be king king must be representative of god so king is therefore called naradev so king is supposed to be representative of god and he has to execute his royal authority by direction of god the brahmanas and the sages they give him direction these things are being very thoroughly discussed when prithu maharaj in the fourth canto this is civilization we say unless state or king is representative of god that is not a state that is not state that is a group that is not state just like even in aboriginals they have also a group that is not state i think there must be some distinction if the group of individuals if they are all rogues and rascals they cannot be representative of god but either singular or plural if all of them are single actually representative of god abiding by the laws laws means actually dharmam to sakshat bhagavat pranito for god said that is actual religion or law and if we manufacture our own ways without reference to god's program it will be useless and failure actually people will be happy under a trained leader whether a monarch or a dictator takes control over the government and rules the people according to standard regulations of authorized scriptures right so these are the laws earlier the great kings they were rajarshis such great kings were more responsible than the modern executive heads because they obliged the great authorities by following the instructions left in the vedic literatures there were no need to enact daily a new legislative bill by impractical fools and to alter it again and again conveniently to serve some purpose the rules and regulations were already set forth by great sages like manu yajnavalkya parashara and other liberated sages and the enactments were all suitable for all ages and all places therefore the rules and regulations were standard and without flaw or defect there was no need of passing daily a new law by legislative assembly to adjust the social order you see the law given by manu was so perfect that it can be applicable for all the time this is perfect trikalajna the word is there trikalajna past present future manu samhita that is the law not that any rascal goes into a legislative assembly and passes some law should the laws be only manu samhita or other scriptures also let's leave this to padmalochan prabhu while he discusses about the implementation part okay but in short the main thing for iskon as laws is bhagavad gita and shila propas instructions and propad has also talked about other standard codes of religion like as we said manu samhita and parashar smriti okay mm-hmm. so this was about democracy so further we will be talking about communism but before we move to communism let's make a small analysis and find out what exactly prabhupada wanted i mean which governing style which political system he wanted exactly so this is a small analysis about that okay so first point is did prabhupada acknowledge the given style of management the given style of political system okay so this is one reference there are different types of government of which monarchy is the most prominent style so here he gives the reference of different types of government so he acknowledges there are different types of government and of which monarchy is most prominent so he acknowledges monarchy there formally everywhere or uh, all over the world the monarchy was prevalent so again this monarchy and in the same continuation in the same paragraph he talks about the advantage of democracy is there so he acknowledges the democracy also just in the same very same paragraph by votes you can elect somebody as president so here it is very clearly said that probad acknowledges different types of government and in this particular paragraph he acknowledges both monarchy and democracy likewise there are the references like and therefore we are training people to be krishna conscious and when the krishna conscious people will elect krishna conscious leaders there will be peace and prosperity so here he indirectly acknowledges democracy not directly directly no why cannot help if 
monarchy means the king was properly trained up so here he acknowledges monarchy similarly in the democracy if people are properly trained up then they will vote for a nice man and there will be nice government so in the very same paragraph in the same saying he the next line he acknowledges democracy and then let's see another example yes group of individuals can remain provided they are all devotees so here he acknowledges democracy and further but either singular or plural if all of them are single actual representative of god abiding by the laws so here he refers to all of them means group that is democracy and single means monarchy and then another place proba says they the head of the state they are degraded either individually or collectively so again here he is talking about individually means monarchy and collectively means the this modern government that is democracy and then further even while criticizing he criticizes both of them equally so here he says no no now either democracy or monarchy the population is shudra so either you make it democracy or any crazy shudra will be on the power so here he criticizes both of them equally and then another place if the king or dictator individually or the members of the government collectively again here the same thing individually or members collectively monarchy and democracy and then another place every state and its administrator regardless of the nature of administration monarchy or democracy oligarchy or dictatorship or autocracy have the prime responsibility to lead the citizens towards god realization so here he acknowledges not only monarchy or democracy also oligarchy dictatorship and autocracy also and then again another place of course whether the system is monarchy or democracy the same correction is still going on so again he in the same he despises but he acknowledges both of them here so as far as acknowledgement is concerned proper is acknowledging both democracy and monarchy both and then there are other references also which will not go through but they are given here and you can find out them in the references below okay so basically first point is did proper acknowledge monarchy yes did proper acknowledge democracy yes he did both so both of them get the point okay now second is in ideal comparison which is better if we have ideal monarchy is that better or we have ideal democracy that is better so let's find out what proba says so here he says mara yudhishthir is the ideal monarch and monarchy under a trained up leader like mara yudhishthir is by far the most superior form of government than the modern republics or government of the people by the people so here he clearly says that ideal monarchy is better than the most superior form of government this modern government that is the democracy democratic government and then another place he says an ideal king thoroughly trained up by culture and devotional service with martial spirit makes a perfect king and such personal monarchy is far better than the so called democracy without any training and responsibility so here he clearly again says that ideal uh, monarchy is better than democracy right and then here he says democracy is one of the worst forms of government uh, i agree professor and then uh, probably replies yes that is my i have said so he acknowledges yes that is true uh, and then probably says yes yes that's a fact very good but the best thing is monarchy because if the monarch is rajashi he is not only king so probably goes on so basically in this he, say, he again says that democracy is not good monarchy is better a monarchy rather is ideal monarchy is the best one and then again actually the perfection of government is monarchy and monarchy monarch should be ideal rajarshi again same thing so proper did acknowledge that monarchy is the best ideal monarchy that is better here again monarchy is better than democracy because if monarchy is very strong the regulative principles within the kingdom are upheld very nicely so again he clearly here says that uh, uh, monarchy is better than democracy so in ideal comparison monarchy gets the point right let's go to the next one in kaliyuga what does the scripture predict what which style of management will there be and which style of man- management there will not be so according to scriptures here we say proper quotes 
Democracy is also mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam that in the Kali Yuga, there will be no more monarchy or the kingdom ruled by the Kshatriyas. But amongst the people who will be tricky, somewhere or other, get the votes of the people, he will be seated on the throne. That is stated. So it is clearly stated here that in uh, Kali Yuga, scriptures say, Srimad Bhagavatam says that in Kali Yuga, there will not be monarchy and there will be democracy. Like Prabhupada here, he clearly says that democracy is also mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. In Kali Yuga, there will be no more monarchy. So basically, it will be democracy. And then another reference. But according to Vedic civilization, this people's government is not sanctioned. Democracy. Democracy is not sanctioned. But, now he says, democracy is not sanctioned. So, the context is democracy in Kali Yuga. But, he says, in Kali Yuga, nobody will be a standard king. Anybody by hook and crook, if he captures the royal throne, he becomes the king. That is predicted in Shubhan Bhagavatam. So, again, democracy had a upper edge here and says monarchy is not possible. Again, so power or no power, in Kali Yuga, the administration will be by less qualified. So, this is a kind of indirect uh, reference, but this is also one reference. And then there is one more, not very strong, but yes, there is also one reference, but Prabhupada almost says it. Kali Yuga, everything should be managed by society. In Bhagavat also, yes. So, he almost says it, but... So this is also a kind of reference, you may take it, may not take it, but the upper two references are good, but the earlier two references, they are good. Yes. So, according to scriptures, democracy is going to be in Kali Yuga and monarchy will not be there in Kali Yuga. So, this point goes to democracy. Right. Now, let's see, did Prabhupada say that it is not possible? Prabhupada, did Prabhupada ever say it is not possible to, to any of these two styles of governance? Okay. So, first of all, this is one reference. Then what system do you advocate? Uh, one guest is asking. Maharaj, don't you think monarchy? And then he almost something unclear. And then Prabhupada immediately cuts him. No, that is not possible. So here, Prabhupada clearly says monarchy is not possible. Again, in another reference, one devotee is asking. I thought you said we should have enlightened monarchy. And then Prabhupada says, no, monarchy is out of date now. So here also, he says monarchy is out of date, or least he clearly said it's not possible. Now here there is a, there is a reference where Prabhupada says that, but monarchy as it was approved by Vedic culture, the monarchy, if the king is first class, God conscious, a king should be like that. That is the ideal king. So he is first giving a background of what ideal king is, ideal monarchy is, and then he says, but if the dictator or the king is perfect man, then his dictatorship or royal power is quite but that is not possible at the present moment. So he here again he is saying that monarchy or such a monarch, an ideal monarchy is not possible. And then he goes on to say, but at the present moment, the very next line, but at the present moment, the democracy is also not perfect. So he is giving up. He is, he is not saying democracy should not be there or it's not possible. What he says is the current form of democracy is not perfect. So it needs modification. That's what he's saying. But for monarchy, he clearly said it's not possible. So this point clearly goes to democracy. Okay. But we'll see another example, another reference. But according to Vedic civilizations, this people's government is not sanctioned. Democracy. Democracy is not sanctioned. But again, he says democracy is not sanctioned. But so it's almost like, okay, it's not sanctioned. But for some reason, we'll be... But in Kali Yuga, nobody will be a standard king. See, so similar references there. Again, monarchy is not possible. Democracy, yeah. That's not the best, but yes. That's so, Prabhupada said it's possible. But for a monarchy, he says it's not possible. So, point goes to democracy this time. Okay. Now, next thing is, is it possible without, with modification? Okay, it may not be possible. Ideal monarchy or ideal this thing may not be possible, but is it possible with any modification? So let's see what Prabhupada says about both. The following gives a hint that it needs modification. So this particular following um, reference, it uh, gives a hint that it needs modification. We have seen this, but we'll see again. But if the dictator or the king is a perfect man, then his dictatorship or royal power is quite, Prabhupada almost continues and but, he cuts in between, but that that is not possible at the present moment. But 
at the present moment the democracy is also not perfect so this gives a hint that okay it's not perfect but it can be made perfect so it it gives a hope yes it it, it can be made perfect and then there is another reference no why monarchy you can continue with democracy but legislature should be first class man who has knowledge not this rascal so kropat says yes democracy but there is there has to be some modification and the modification he suggests legislature should be first class man who has knowledge not this rascal so this rascal should be there there should be uh, first class man as the senators or legislators and then in the same continuation kropat says the mass of people should be educated just like we are educating no meat eating so automatically the meat selling slaughter house will be stopped so this is another modification he says to the same thing okay democracy could be but this modification should be there so he suggests that these modifications are there and then it can be implemented then there is another reference where uh, where the woman reporter is asking so a leader should not be elected and proper says elected but not by this general public so his election could be there that is democracy should be there but this way what is the way not general public election but some intelligent people should be no, first class intelligent people should be electing so with modification it's possible he says and then again there is another reference no that is also not possible and therefore we are training people to be krishna conscious and when the krishna conscious people will elect krishna conscious leaders there will be peace and prosperity so here he says that no that is not possible monarchy he was talking basically of monarchy and then and then he says that but democracy yes this this change has to be there so what is the change that we are doing training people to be krishna conscious so we are creating krishna conscious voters that is the point so this modification and then it can be implemented and then this is a very good reference now this one is very nice except that it needs a bit of explanation now here papa says no why cannot help if monarchy means the king was properly trained was properly trained up similarly in the democracy if people are pro- properly trained up then they will vote for nice men and there will be nice government now here it appears to be a uh, proposition saying for both but the thing is to understand we'll have to go a little bit behind the scene what happens uh, in this conversation let's go a bit behind the conversation here this guest four who is asking this do you think that the present democratic system will be able to impart a spiritual education proba says no <laughs> so here he condemns democracy then uh, the guest force says then what system do you advocate of course as vedic culture concern and we advocate monarchy and then immediately a bit after that the guest is asking oh so you think you monarchy proba says no that is also not possible and therefore we are training people to go so here uh, the guest is mm, this guest four is uh, like a bit of confused by this time because first robert uh, criticizes democracy and then he asks okay if not democracy then what then robert says oh as far as vedic culture is concerned we you know advocate monarchy but then he again says that no no monarchy is also not possible so by this time what happens is this guest becomes a bit of confused he thinks that both systems will not work that's what prabhupada is saying so that's why he is asking here you said that monarchy and democracy both systems cannot help this cause then so <laughs> then prabhupada explains this meaning this guest at this point is having a doubt that can they help are they at all right so what is happening is here the question is not about whether these systems can be applicable today or in kalyu question is at all are these systems not working or not that's his question that is his doubt so probably saying no no actually these systems both are valid and both will work but if certain conditions are met now if you ask oh uh, are these condition can these conditions be met in kalyuga that is a different question for that question the answer is no for monarchy and yes for democracy which prabhat says in other places but this particular answer which prabhat gives is not for whether it will be implemented in can be implemented in kalyuga or not no this question is are the systems in itself valid that is the question so prabhat is saying yeah both systems are valid with these conditions so as far as validity of the two systems are concerned yes they are valid 
irrespective of which one is better that's a different thing but validity as both are valid but probat is not telling anything about whether it can be implemented in this age or not that's a different thing because if we go a little be, uh, behind he says no it is not possible monarchy is not possible but for democracy he here says at the end he says if people are properly trained up then they will vote means they are not currently but in future it can be but for monarchy he says the king was trained up in past it happened so it has to be understood in that way right okay so this point goes to democracy again is it possible with modifications well proper clearly says this for democracy and for monarchy he clearly says no it's not possible okay so let's go to next one so next point is did proper give a clear instruction of okay to this system or do this to any system any of the two systems so here let's see the first reference so in kaliyug everything should be managed by society in bhagavat also yes and then the word is saying oh democracy in kaliyug democracy proper clearly says yes society body so here proper is clearly saying yes in kaliyug society body democracy that's a point and he, and then he also interestingly gives reference to bhagavat and then there is another uh, place pro the guest is asking then what system do you advocate and he says maharaj don't you think monarchy and then he can just probat cuts in between he says no that is also not possible and therefore we are training people to be krishna conscious and then there is a kind of indirect reference but yes this is also because it's uh, telling about what we are doing actually and then another place no why monarchy you can continue democracy so here he is clearly saying no monarchy continue democracy but legislator should be first class man who has knowledge not these rascals he is clearly saying it here so there is again an another place proposes keep the democracy very clear keep the democracy but make one state united states of the world why united states of america so there are good number of references where probably clearly says to democracy so this point clearly goes to democracy okay and then we'll take this last point which system did proba practically implement in iskon so here is a reference so the report is asking proba do you expect um, to name one person as your successor or have you already and then proba is replying that i am not contemplating now but there is no need of one person as other things are managed by a committee so this also can be managed and the committee may elect one person as chief as just like in the democracy there are senators and there is president so it may be i may nominate or they can nominate so here he clearly says this is for iskon implementation by the way and there is another reference kaliyuga everything should be managed by society in bhagavat also yes now he, here they are talking of some uh, iskon affairs by the way you can read the reference and then uh, devotee is saying oh democracy in kaliyuga democracy probably clearly says yes society body and then says oh that is not best and, and the talk goes on further so basically this is regarding iskon management so while implementation probably clearly is uh, implementing democratic style and then there is another reference of course everything should be decided in a meeting and president may be have a casting vote but the decision of the meeting will be actually the decision not that president autocracy no so this is the point so this is also specifically regarding iskon you can read the references uh, later all right yes so this again point goes to democracy while implementing proper practically implemented democracy in iskon right so this point again goes to democracy but yes again remember that democracy what probat wanted is the modified democracy with modifications not the current not the current form of democracy that they are having in uh, the countries no the modifications which you already discussed right so in sum the result is in front of you to summarize did probat acknowledge it to be a style of governance monarchy yes democracy yes in ideal form who is superior monarchy is superior scriptural predictions this point goes to democracy in kali yuga it will be democracy not monarchy did probat ever say a clear 
it's not possible to any of the styles monarchy yes he did say it's not possible to so democracy no he didn't say like that is it possible with modifications monarchy there is no reference either ways and democracy yes it is possible it is possible with modifications and then sixth point is did proper ever say a clear to this to any of the styles monarchy no he didn't say democracy yes he said did probad ever practically implemented in his con while implementation monarchy no he didn't implement monarchy rather he implemented democracy so overall democracy is the thing that should be implemented that is a conclusion right so i specifically gave this analysis so things will be crystal clear right Hare Krishna